um, more being discussed about electro desiccation and other methods for tumour removal. So um, a couple of uh, housekeeping things before we get started. Um, so I have just hit record, so we will uh, make this available after the event um, for anyone who wishes to make use of that recording, if we can, if that's all right with you, Mark. You might hear something. Okay. And um, also, if everyone can please keep themselves uh, muted during uh, the uh, presentation um, and during the chat session afterwards. Um, any questions that you may have, if you can please um, add them to the chat box down the bottom um, and we'll you know, give you time to ask. Okay. Um, if there's any technical difficulties, uh, please feel free to get in touch with our head office in Sydney. Um, you can dial them via phone on 02 9713 6111. So across to Dr. Baldwin, who has a wealth of experience in um, managing um, NF tumours. Thanks very much um, for inviting me, first of all. Um, I wouldn't say I've got a wealth of experience, but I'm happy to share the experience that I do have um, with everybody. And um, thanks everyone for being here. It's great to be able to use a bit of modern technology and actually communicate this kind of information directly to patients, which, you know, we understand that it's otherwise really difficult sometimes to find a plastic surgeon who will talk to you and to come and see one if you're far away and all that sort of stuff. So I'm really happy to do it, really excited. I'm in the first one ever. So quite quite happy about that. Um, I'll try and um, see if I can pull up my little PowerPoint presentation and see what happens. Um, maybe, maybe. Um, Oh, whoops. Um, yeah, if, you, if you've got technical difficulties, then don't call me because I probably don't know how to fix it. Um, I'll try, I'll try one more time. Um, uh, if anybody's seeing my PowerPoint presentation, then someone type a chat in the chat box telling me you're seeing it. I don't know if it's working or not. Um, Oh, you can see the title slide. No, can't see. No, can't see. Um, 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 Oh, it was showing a minute ago. Top panel is green. Um, uh, I think maybe somebody else has got the screen. Oh dear. Um, somebody else has got the screen still. I can't. It won't go green when I click on it. Okay. That's all. So look, I've cancelled this end. So. Is it going green now? I've got no one should be able to see. No, nah, it's got it's got <laughs> it's the first one. We're allowed to have technical difficulties, yeah. especially when it's Definitely. involved. Allowed. It's probably be not normal if we didn't have them. Um, no, it's not going green. It's just going between one window and two windows. So I think somehow I'm not allowed to share my screen or something. Maybe. Uh, are you able to turn your webcam off and then start the screen? Oh, I can try that. I'll unshare my webcam and I'll see what happens. Um, no, it's still it's still got your um, it's still got NF webinar one organizer go to meeting. Uh, it's not letting me be in charge of that screen, basically. Oh goodness. Okay. Sorry, everyone. We will get this very, sorted very soon um, and be up and running.
I'll keep talking because quite frankly, my presentation is not that special. It's just a PowerPoint presentation. Um, okay, uh, so neurofibromatosis type one, and that's what I'm gonna keep calling it. I know it's not always that, but that's just what I'll keep. Mark, your presentation's visible now. Okay, yeah, beauty. Um, we've lost my sound. No, my sound's back. My sound's gotta be there, surely. <laughs> it's back, <laughs> good. Um, okay, now I'll start. Neurofibromatosis type one, who knows what about this stuff? Well, I can tell you the first thing is that Plastic surgeons are the specialists in the surgical treatment of neurofibromatosis type one. We get training in it. We deal with patients in, as trainees and stuff like that. And we still don't know that much about it. And there's probably plenty of plastic surgeons who've never treated a patient with um, NF type one basically, or haven't treated a patient since they were registrars. So you guys will know a lot more about um, about this than we do. And um, I think that um, if you see a plastic surgeon, and the whole point of me giving this presentation is to say, you don't need to see me, you can pretty much see any plastic surgeon. If you see a plastic surgeon to talk about this stuff, do expect that you will be teaching them stuff. Expect that you will be, there'll be stuff you know about that they just don't know about. What surgeons do know about is cutting people up and doing surgery, and we're good at that. And the basic principles that we have of um, keeping patients safe when we operate on them, not doing any harm to them when we're operating on them, not making things worse when we operate on them, being conservative and not overdoing things. These are all things that are drilled into us from a super young age. And so you don't, I think that as a surgeon, you probably don't need to have treated hundreds of um, neurofibromatosis patients to be able to actually do surgery on them and to do a good job and to get good results as long as as long as surgeons stick to the basic principles which they will because that's that's our training um, but don't expect to front up to a plastic surgeon who who says like i think i've treated i've treated less than six patients maybe six something like that when i've done well electro desiccation or or something similar um, when surgeons um when surgeons uh, see a patient with multiple neurofibromas or schwannomas or whatever you want to call them, um, our tiny plastic surgery monkey brain immediately kicks into overdrive and we start thinking, well, what are our options here? What are your options as a surgeon? Well, your first option is to do nothing. And that is always our default position unless there's a good reason to do something. Um, by doing nothing, we're not making the situation much worse. Actually, we might make, be making it a little bit worse because if the tumours are progressing and things are getting worse and symptoms are getting worse, then maybe by not operating, we're not doing the patient a favour, we're making them suffer for longer. But doing nothing is generally seen as the safe option the least can go wrong with. The second um, option, which is what I'll talk about the most in this talk, and I think what everyone wants to hear about is some form of destruction or excision of the lesions and then allowing them to just heal up. Um, now, electro desiccations, um, what we're all here to talk about and, and hear about, but that is actually only one of the choices that we've got for effecting that option. We can just cut them all off with a knife and stop the bleeding and then leave them to heal up. Heal up. We can um, use a laser to burn them off. There's a whole bunch of things um, and they all are pretty much the same in our eyes. So plastic surgeons won't think electro desiccation is anything super special, which is like, that's just a fancy word. Um, it's, it's no different to us as, as, as effectively just cutting them off. The next kind of level of things is to cut things rather than cut them kind of off when they're poking up from the surface of the skin, which is basically first one, 
the second thing is to cut them out. And when we do that, we usually cut out like a boat shaped piece and then we stitch it up as a straight line. Um, it ta it, it's a lot more labor intensive. So lasering or, or, or electro desiccating a lesion might take 20 seconds. Cutting it out and stitching it's gonna take three minutes, four minutes. And you can't do a whole lot of lesions that are close together or next to each other that way. And you are removing kind of some normal skin when you do that. Um, and so it wouldn't be common for us to cut out more than six or a dozen lesions at, at the very most in one sitting. Um, those stitches that we use to stitch it up are gonna to need to be taken out, et cetera, et cetera, like it's too much to put someone through to cut out a whole lot. And the last thing we think is um, excision and then for some form of patching. Now this really is applicable to uh, plexiform neurofibromas principally, but it might also be applicable in cases where patients have got a huge number of neurofibromas that are all basically right next to each other. So there's virtually no normal skin visible um, between the neurofibromas. And in that scenario, we might say um, we can't, we have to just remove an whole area of skin and then do some form of patching where we move skin from another part of the body. The problem obviously being that's a big operation then, we're limited in how large an area we can do in one shot. And the other problem is of course, that patients who have a lot of neurofibromas probably don't have a nice smooth flat piece of skin we can use as a patch that we can peel off their leg or their thigh or somewhere where we get these patches from. Um, if they're really bumpy enough to need that kind of option, they probably haven't got a good donor site. Um, but as soon as we see someone, that's the first things we start thinking about. So um, electro is the one I wanna concentrate on today. Um, and um, it is just the uh, application of electrical current into the lesion to cook it, basically. Um, diathermy is the name of the tool that we use to apply that electrical current. And diathermy is used basically in every single operation that we do as a plastic surgeon, every single one, we would have a diathermy. The diathermy machine um, generates electrical, high voltage electrical current, um, which then goes down a wire, uh, this pitch is probably too small, down a wire to this pencil-like device that the surgeon is holding. It's got a couple of buttons in it. This plug bit's plugged into the machine. Electricity comes down that wire through the pencil, through the tip of the pencil, which heats up a lot, then into the body of the patient where it um, disperses throughout the body and then stuck on the patient's thigh or some part of skin, you've got what's called the return plate, which is a big um, sticky blue thing. And the electricity goes back into the machine down another wire from the return plate into the machine. Cause you've got to have a, a electrical circuit where you have electricity going around in a circle. You can't just have you can see my mouse, unfortunately. I'm doing really nice movements with it to show the circle, but I don't have that. Um, um, I'll get to the questions. I'll get to the questions. Um, I'll get to the questions at the end. I'll answer everybody's questions at the end. Um, <clears throat> so that application of energy is used mainly in surgery to stop bleeding. We use the heat generated from the uh, electrical current to cook the blood vessels, which um, closes them over so no blood can get out the end of the pipe, basically. And that's used commonly, commonly, commonly. Um, with electro desiccation, um, it's kind of just a, a slight variant on that. Um, the way that I've done it, and I've tried a couple of ways, but I think this is the best way, at least here in Australia, is we use what's called a needle point diathermy. So the very pointy end of that pencil I showed you, the very tip of that pencil is usually quite a blunt thing because you want to be able to kind of touch onto a blood vessel with a blunt thing. And for the 
power of the electricity to kind of spread out a bit from that blunt tip to coagulate the blood vessels. But you can get something called a needle point diathermy, and that's as, as the name suggests, the tip of the diathermy is very pointy. It is usually used actually um, for uh, where we have to do really fine work and we only want the very tip of the diathermy to kind of conduct electricity or where we're actually using it to cut things. Um, but the great thing about it is it can be stabbed through the skin because it's pointy. And so when you're electrodesicating, what you do is basically choose a, um, choose a, a lesion, stab the uh, needle point diathermy through the skin into the middle of that lump and then press the button. At this point, you're probably asking, well, why does this bloke get paid so much? It doesn't sound that hard to me. And you know what? I couldn't agree more. You're right. Um, but um, when you do that, you will see that the lesion will actually kind of light up like a little light bulb and little flashes of um, electrical current lighting it up. And you keep your finger on the button as you watch the um, neurofibroma tissue that's forming that lump shrink. And it kind of shrinks and it kind of liquefies and it kind of turns into smoke. So it kind of des destroys it. Um, and you then <clears throat> repeat that a few hundred times, basically. Um, the setting I use, it's, it's not super critical, but the setting I use, the machine I use is this one, which is, um, you can put it on fulgurate and you can, there's different settings on the machines and some settings are more designed to close blood vessels. Some settings are more designed to cut tissue rather than coagulate it. Um, and the one I use for electrodesication usually is fulgurate um, because it seems to destroy the tissue quickly, more quickly and more efficiently than um, the other settings whilst not having turned up too, too high. It gets hot. You can feel the tissue getting hot. Um, the key is, is to try and destroy the middle of the lesion um, without damaging the skin too much. And this is, this is the sole reason why electrodesiccation has kind of seemingly become like popular or is seen as a really good idea. Because most of the other things like lasering or cutting a whole bunch of spots off, you then, lasering will destroy the skin layers first before it starts destroying the internal tissue of the neurofibroma and cutting them off, obviously, you cut out, um, you cut off the skin that's covering over it. Um, the skin covering over these neurofibromas is not normal, it's way too thin for normal skin, but um, it is some form of skin. So when we do, uh, if we cut off a whole bunch, basically, first of all, you'd have a lot of bleeding from each individual one that was cut. Neurofibromas are notorious in plastic surgery for bleeding a lot more than they should. Plexiform neurofibromas give us great trouble when we're operating on them because they bleed a lot. The blood vessels in them are not normal. The blood vessels in them don't shrink up when you use the diathermy on them and they bleed a lot. So even if you're cutting small ones off, they tend to bleed more than say a mole or a skin cancer or some other skin lesion would. Um, and if you cut a whole bunch off, you're gonna actually have like a really big raw area with no skin on it, which is then gonna need to heal. Um, so the idea of electrodesiccation the whole idea of it is that you can kill or destroy as much as possible of that neurofibroma with, without doing as much damage to the skin that's covering over the top of it. And if the skin that's covering over the top of it is basically healthy, then that particular spot won't have to, um, won't have to heal up. Skin won't have to grow over the raw, raw area or grow over the whole because the skin will already be over the hole. Um, so that's the whole crux of electrodesiccation is it results in a smaller raw area that needs to heal up basically. Um, now, how much 
electro desiccation can we actually do? Like what is feasible? Well, it depends on a bunch of stuff. Um, obviously, um, obviously, how old you are is part of it. How many neurofibromas um, we could potentially be dealing with, and obviously we don't have to do every single one. How big they are, how small they are, um, where they are. You know, are they are they all over your face or uh, are they on your body? Um, again, one of the attractions of electro desiccation compared to other modalities is that it kind of does allow you to basically do more in one go than more uh, other other previously used method methods would uh -oh. um oh i think i'm back on i don't know i might have lost my microphone i was going to say um the advantage of electro desiccation is you can kind of do more with that than you could from a more traditional kinds of surgery basically you can do more lesions in one sitting now um Generally speaking, the ones I've done, we've always done under a general anaesthetic in hospital. And um, if you're gonna do a whole lot of lesions at once, then definitely a general anaesthetic is um, a good idea. And here in Australia, it's kind of different to how it is in America. And a lot of, you know, stuff in life, like what pants are cool and what music we listen to, we steal off the Americans. Um, and surgery is no different. So we take a lot of what, what stuff that gets developed or um, first tried out in America and we start doing it ourselves. But in America, there's a lot of pressure to not put people into hospital when they're having surgery. It's incredibly expensive to go into hospital uh, in America if you're not insured or don't have some form of coverage, insurance coverage, and they don't have a Medicare, so there's no universal health care, thanks to Donald Trump, blah, blah. Um, so I think in America, there's a lot more pressure to try and avoid um, inpatient and general anaesthetic surgeries um, than there is here in Australia. In Australia, we basically, first of all, we think general anaesthetics like super safe. It's actually not a big deal at all. It's probably safer than driving your car down the freeway on a rainy night in the dark. Um, and our hospitals are also like super safe and really well run and well accredited and stuff like that. And um, they're relatively cheap compared to America. So we kind of don't hesitate to say, well, you're going to be better off having this done in hospital, even if it's just done in hospital as a day case where you don't stay overnight. Um, and even in some cases, if we don't give you a general anaesthetic, we might still do it under local anaesthetic and sedation. We might still say, look, it's easier to do this in hospital. It's gonna be heaps more comfortable for you. Um, but how much we do in one sitting, um, yes, those kind of factors do play a part. So we might say, look, you know, because of X and Y, we're only gonna do this many in one shot or this area of the body in one shot so that you can still go home the same day and you don't stay overnight, stuff like that. The main big issue, the main issue in Australia. Um, my Siri watch is talking to me, sorry. Um, I think I've turned it off. Um, <clears throat> so in Australia, where the public hospital system is available, as well as the private hospital system, as well as private hospital system not being massively unaffordable, like tens of thousands of dollars, we'll tend to err on the side of caution and say, do it in hospital. We're still limited in how much we can do. We still can't do all of your entire body in one go, even with a general anaesthetic. And that is largely because of healing. So what I said before about keeping the skin alive over the top of the lesion, it's good in theory, it's the idea of it, but it does not work as well as you might imagine. And inevitably, medium chunks of that skin that we're trying to keep alive will be cooked along with the lesion. So if the lesions are bigger, um, you know, bigger than kind of the end of your pinky finger, that's probably going to be big enough that we're going to have to kill, well, we're going to accidentally kill some of that skin in trying to destroy the whole lesion. 
Sometimes with those bigger ones, we might say, well, we're not going to completely try and destroy the whole thing. We're just going to shrink it down to a manageable size so it's not super obvious. Um, but we're still limited. You can't do too much to someone. They need to have one part of their body they can lie on to go to sleep. Um, they need to be not in unbearable agony because they've got a thousand holes in them after the surgery and um, they need to be able to bathe and function. And the amount of healing that you have, your body has to do is pretty big. Like if you've got a couple of hundred holes in you, your body has to do a lot of physiological work to actually repair all that damage that I've done. Um, and so we're limited and in, in how much we'll do it once. And usually we'll pick an area or a couple of areas. Um, sometimes we'll say, well, we're going to do one side of you because you're going to be lying on, on, on your right hand side on the operating table. We're going to, we're going to do your left hand side. You're lying on your back on the operating table. We're only going to do things that are on the front. Um, and that usually limits how much we're prepared to do in one shot. Um, so talking about the cost of it, well, it's free. Yeah. You could get this surgery done in the public hospital anywhere in Australia. It won't cost you a cent. You need to get a referral into the plastic surgery department from your local doctor um, and they will see you for this. Sometimes you have to wait a long time to actually have an appointment with a plastic surgeon in the public hospital because they'll, they'll say, look, this is not urgent. Um, but once you've seen that plastic surgeon in the public hospital, um, they will then they will then well they should put you on the waiting list to have it done this is where you might have to use your powers of persuasion and say to them look um you know i've read about this electro desiccation procedure this is kind of what i'm keen on trying are you prepared to to do it have you done it before has anyone at this hospital done it before who might be be prepared to take me on as a patient blah 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 Use a bit of powers of persuasion to try and um, get them to um, to agree to that because they might say, "Look, I don't, I'm, I don't do that, or I've never done that. I only want to cut out three of them." And you're like, "I've got three hundred, doc. Help me out here." Um, and worst case scenario, you know, drop my name. Say, oh, Mark Baldwin in Melbourne told me blah blah blah. He said, "Call him." So there's not many plastic surgeons in Australia. So if if one of them rings me up and says, you know, Mark, how do you do it? I'll just tell them, it's easy. Um, but the bad thing about public, obviously the, there's long waiting lists to be seen and then there's long waiting lists to get the surgery done. And it's often pretty disorganized and you're booked and you're canceled and stuff like that. Doing things in the private hospital system. And again, pretty much most plastic surgeons um, are gonna be able to help you with this sort of stuff. Um, same deal, tell them this is what I want done. If they don't know how to do it or they're not sure, tell them to call me. Um, depends on your insurance. So if you've got private insurance, which is basically what the private hospital system's designed for, it might cost you anywhere from a thousand bucks up to several thousand bucks, depending on how many are done and where they are on the body and how long the surgery takes, basically. If you haven't got private insurance, Having this done as a private patient is going to be really expensive because it's a hospital job, because it's an anaesthetic, general anaesthetic, it's going to cost, you know, several thousand dollars at least, maybe more than five, I don't know, depends on a bunch of stuff, but it's going to be super expensive to the point where we don't like doing that to patients. We say if patients have not, have not got private health insurance, we say, look, you're probably better off just going to your public hospital and seeking treatment through there because doing it as an uninsured um, private patient is going to be A, expensive, and B, if there's problems and we need to re-operate on you or take you back and do more work or something <clears throat> because of complications, it's going to be even more expensive. So we can't even guarantee how much it's going to cost. The other big issue is that, as I kind of implied, healing up of this is a big thing. And so you don't want to be far away from your surgeon. You, you want to be close to them. You want to be able to get to them. You want them to be able to keep an eye on you as things are healing. Um, <clears throat> if you talk to patients who've had this, I reckon they're going to tell you, you know, six weeks, a couple of months before they were kind of basically healed. You, you, it's too hard to, to manage patients who are having problems with the healing and stuff if they're far away. 
how good is electrodesiccation? <clears throat> it's okay, is my answer. Um, the Gartner hype cycle shows you what happens when a new thing gets invented. Everyone wants to try it. Everyone's super enthusiastic about it. Let's do that. That sounds like a great idea. Um, we're on the upward of this curve. It will, um, it will, it will come down. We will find that, and there's already a couple of papers appearing in the literature saying, you know, complications of electrodesiccation where, where perhaps too much was done in one sitting and the patient had real problems with bad scarring or uh, infections afterwards, poor wound healing. It's better for lesions that are kind of deeper under the surface, so not so sticky out, smaller lesions, um, and where there is a bit of a gap of normal skin between each lesion. It's not as, not as super for where the lesions are really mostly poking up from the surface of the skin, where they're larger, like larger than the end of your pinky finger, and um, where a lot of them are like basically touching each other. It just, there's not enough normal tissue in between to get it to heal up. Um, all right, that's my talk. So um, I've got a couple of questions from people, uh, which I'll now answer and, um, if anybody else has a question, they can type it in and then I'll hand back over to the boss. Uh, first question is, um, for 11, <clears throat> 11 year old, recommend any plastic surgeons in Australia, New Zealand? Well, first thing I'd recommend whoever your local plastic surgeon is. So Royal Children's Hospital in Melbourne, um, Children's Hospital in Sydney, all of the hospitals that treat kids have plastic surgeons. All of those plastic surgeons have seen and treated kids with neurofibromatosis. They may not have done electrodesiccation before, or they might have done it, but not called it that, quite frankly, um, because I was doing this, I did my first one of these maybe seven years ago, and I didn't know that there was a name for it, a special name. I was just, I thought that was the quickest way of getting rid of the most, and so, um, the plastic surgeon might have done it, but not, not realise they've been doing it. Um, so I would recommend seeing who you've got locally. Um, to get a job as a plastic surgeon at a children's hospital in Australia, you have to be pretty good. So I think you can be, you can be, uh, I, I think being close is more important than who you see. If you continue with these procedures, is it likely the, uh, the fibroma will grow back? Um, <clears throat> if the neurofibromas are growing anyway, they will continue to grow. And if you don't destroy all of that one particular um, neurofibroma, um, what's left behind will continue to grow. But you're still better off. This is not a cure. This is um, to make you look better and feel better about yourself, basically. And it's pretty successful at doing that, I think. But it's not a cure for it, and it's not going to mean that you have it once and you never need it done again. Um, if your neurofibromas are growing, they're growing, and you may grow new ones that need it done in the future and stuff like that. Um, so it might completely kill some of them, but it's probably not going to stop you from needing potentially needing more surgery. Um, okay, where am I up to? My son, three-year-old, has a plexiform threading from his middle ear down to his product gland. At the moment, his face is mildly asymmetrical and hasn't grown a lot. At what point would a plastic surgeon act and what could you do? Um, that's a really hard question. So um, the plastic surgeon would act when there was a cosmetic problem or when there was a functional problem. Um, and if there's functional issues where there's um, problems with the facial nerve or something like that, that might prompt us to act. Or if it had become cosmetically kind of serious, um, then we might act as well. But <clears throat> it, it, it would be obviously a decision that we've made in conjunction with the parents and or the kid if he was old enough by that stage. Um, Uh, okay. Um, besides electro, etc., what other options are there to remove fibromas? Well, there's cutting out and stitching. There's cutting out and patching. There's lasering. There's a there's a bunch of things. And if it's only a few lesions that need to be done, then you know cutting and stitching is probably better because you 
you, you heal up quickly. You're healed in a week if it's stitched up. Stitches are taken out after a week, it's all good. No prolonged dressings, no raw spots, no holes that are filling in. Um, Nikki, which hospital are you based at? Um, I'm not actually in the public hospital system at all anymore. I'm only in private and I work at a, um, John Faulkner and Francis Perry here in Melbourne, um, basically, and my rooms are in Essendon. But don't come and see me unless you live near me. Like I said, you, 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 I'm not better than every other plastic surgeon at this, um, basically. Sam, I have a lot of lumps under the skin. They are painful when bumped. I am assuming the Electro option is best for these. Most of them are pea-sized or smaller, or so I think. Yeah, I think if the lumps are under the skin, it's um, a good option. Um, it's, it's certainly worth trying. The ones that are a bit deeper in, where there's a good thicker layer of skin over the top of them, are going to be better because you're not going to um, accidentally kill the thin, uh, thin skin that might be sitting on top of them. So I definitely think it's worth a shot. And again, you might, you might talk to your surgeon about it and you might say, look, these three are really driving me bananas. Why don't we do an experiment on me? Try it on these three, see how we go. Um, and then if it works really well and the tenderness goes away, let's come back and do some more. Um, where, Delia, where do po people mostly get the electro desiccation? Um, on their bodies, I'm presuming you mean on their bodies. Um, well, they get the electro desiccation where they've got the biggest problem. So for some patients that will be on their face and neck and upper chest because that's what is, and hands, because that's what is seen by other people. So if, it's, if, if their issue is principally cosmesis, that's kind of the first place to start. Um, but other patients might have problems with, um, you know, their back because their back's a lot worse than their face. They might want to do it there first. So, or worst case scenario, if they've got a lot of confluent lesions, they might have trouble actually washing between them and keeping the skin clean and stuff like that. So you might need to do it there. It's basically wherever the biggest problem is. And the problems are either going to be cosmetic problems or they're going to be functional problems. Um, difficulty with bleeding or irritation or sweatiness or dirt getting trapped between them or can't lie on them to sleep and stuff like that. What's the best, Sam again, what's the best option for lumps above the skin? I've had these removed at my GP, but it's left scarring and stitches even opened up. Yeah, okay. So I'm not surprised to hear that. Stitches can and will open up. Um, neurofibroma tissue doesn't heal well. Um, you kind of got to cut the whole lump out if you're cutting it and stitching it and expecting it to heal quickly and easily. The whole neurofibroma needs to be removed. If you're only partially removing part of it, um, it will not heal very well. Um, so if there's lumps above the skin, it depends how many there are and where they are and stuff like that. Um, the best option might be cutting and stitching. Um, or, and, and if there's a, a lot of them or in there at a spot where the scarring really matters, you might want to go and get a plastic surgeon to do that. Um, or you might say, like, for, so for some patients I've had, we've had a, a lot of bigger ones above the, like sticking up from the skin a lot. I've said, look, it doesn't matter how much we cook that one, it's as, like as big as the end of your thumb. Um, even if we completely cook it with the electro desiccation, you're going to have like a floppy empty sack of extra skin there. That's not going to be great. Um, the amount of current to completely cook that thing is going to be big. Let's just shave that one off and then diathermy the base of it. And again, the ones that are kind of like a mushroom with like a little stalk and they're really mostly outside the body, um, slicing them off and then using the electro, uh, the diathermy to stop the bleeding in the in the raw stump that's left is a good option. Next question is the pain they're causing, will this help with the pain by doing this? No. As far as I'm aware, I, I'm just going to say no, no to that. Like it might, but that would be a happy coincidence. I wouldn't, I would never say to a patient, we are doing this because these individual lumps are painful. Um, and that we're doing surgery to get rid of your pain or to improve it. I just, I think it's too hit and miss that that would actually happen. It might, it might not, um, but I would not operate for that reason. I'd want there to be another reason basically to operate. 
Um, Okay, so with the lumps, next one's from Mark, with the lumps above the skin where they're, being, where they're causing pain from being touched, uh, Mark's thinking they need to be cut, um, not electrodesicated. Um, is that right? Uh, again, I think it's, it's, that's a tough one. And for each individual one that was causing a problem, you'd want to look at it and you'd want to say, well, I think that one we should just electrodesicate. And I think that one should be cut out and stitched. And I think that one should be shaved off. Um, and if it's only a few lesions, you might actually talk to the patient about what the plan is for each individual one. Or you might talk to the patient and say, we're going to bring you in and we're going to do a dozen where we of the, this, these ones, because these ones all need to be sliced off. And we're going to see how that goes for you. Do you heal up okay? And are you happy with the results before we do any more? Um, you might say to the patient, we're going to have you in the operating theatre and we're going to do the right hand side of your back from the tip of your shoulder to your mid back. Each individual spot in that whole section, I will decide as I get to it. Do I shave it? Do I cut it? Do I electrodesicate it? Um, so I can't, I can't answer the question properly without actually looking at that individual lump, but electrodesication is not the be all and end all. It's not like the bee's knees that works for the best for everything. It works good um, in some situations and the big advantages of it are that in general, you can do a lot more in one go. And um, in general, um, that, that's a good thing in general. Okay. Um, good. I'll 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 wind it up there because I'll be getting in trouble with my secretaries for running late for sure. Um, but if anybody else has any other questions or whatever, I'm sure that um, we can we can um, figure that out. You can email me or something like that. Or yeah. So look, if anyone does have any questions that we haven't um, had Mark answer for us today. Um, if you, you are most welcome to email them through to info at ctf.org.au, um, and you know we can see whether Mark can answer those for us uh, briefly via email if that's um, okay with you, Mark. Yeah, sure. Fantastic. Look, thank you so very much for your time today. Um, I know it's been great listening um, to all that you have to say and I very much think that our community is uh, thinking the same thing. Um, so again, thank you for your time and um, I'm sure... No problem. Sorry for talking for so long. Plastic surgeons really like to listen to the sound of their own voices. <laughs> all good. No worries. Right, thanks, thanks a lot. Everyone. Bye. Bye.